Nina. Mwah. Thank you for the animation. Thank you for the animation film design. Thank you for Nina Sabnani. Thank you for Caroline Leaf. Thank you for Girls Night Out. <laughs> Thank you for all the love, the trust, the support, the encouragement, the inspiration. And thank you for introducing me to women who run with the wolves so that I could learn how to be a man who runs with the women who run with the wolves. <laughs> thank you so much. I love you. Mwah. Hi, Aditi. Uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for your patience with all the foundation kids. Uh, we gave you a really tough time. Uh, I could say that I'm one, I was one of the difficult ones, especially I remember how you had to come to our hostel room to convince me to go to the hospital when I had some 106 or whatever fever with malaria. And I was convinced that something terrible would happen if I would go to the VS hospital. But I'm glad that the temperature did come down. And uh, really, thank you for your patience and your time. And of course, post that over the years, it has been we learned so much just watching all of you, watching you, watching Ranjan and the kind of work that uh, both of you have done. I really want to just take this opportunity to thank you. Thanks. Aditi, when I think of you, I think of the first semester in textiles, first week of fabric construction, and I'm making my composition in black ink. And then you come to my table telling me, can you show me 100 concepts by night and I, would, I had a questioning look saying night and she said yeah come to my house at 10 30. I was dumbfounded but then I did my hundred concepts in ink and went at 10 30. I spread all the concepts out in your drawing room and I was you served me to a mild black tea which unfortunately I could not gulp down being a Kathiawadi Guju and you ended up selecting the first concept I had done in the morning. That night was really a night of frustration. I had too many questions in my mind that what do you, what does she really want? And over the years, doing projects together till almost doing my diploma with you being my guide, I got an answer to that question saying you wanted to me to discover myself. So through all that exhaustive explorations, being persistent, uh, being rigorous and not leaving any stone unturned, I think all that really helped in the kind of work I do now, kind of effort I put into research and uh, exploring techniques, exploring ideas. I think there's so many things that not only you taught us with uh, with your words but also silently with your actions and even today when i'm doing projects i know silently you're talking to me in my mind and it's so amazing it's so amazing thanks aditi hi aditi it's ekta a big big hello from london i wanted to say um huge thanks for being my guru my teacher. It is an incredible privilege to have been your student. I remember you taught fabric construction to us nearly 20 years ago and it was an utterly transformative process for me. I suddenly started looking at the world with new eyes. The way you shaped our gaze, you know, your sensitivity to material, to colour, but more than that, your generosity as a teacher and your humanity really touched me and has shaped me. So I wanted to say thank you for being that source of inspiration for me and just carry on being you and sending you big hugs and lots of love. We all have amazing experiences of how Aditi has very profoundly influenced us and our learning and she's shaped us. Uh, but I think I'd like to talk about a few very endearing aspects of her. There are times when she's, she's reminiscing and she's telling you a funny story and she would just break into these peals of childlike laughter, okay, like totally 
unhindered. It's as though she's just going to start rolling on the floor, kind of. It's it just lightens your spirit up so much, and I love I love to have a good meal with her. You know, she the way she relishes food, the way she, you know, she suddenly the food will just come alive for you. You know, with the the color of it, the texture of it, the 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 fragrance, the the flavors. It's it's amazing, and uh, of course. Uh, a good cup of refreshing nice light chai so from a teacher who really taught you to uh, push your boundaries to a friend who can really make you kick back relax and enjoy that nice cup of chai with her i think i really uh, it's been amazing to to know her all these years and then i'll start okay before we start we just go to share screen and uh, we've got some pictures to share it's been collected and, and, and i think okay. also more, uh, ajit that you know uh, the video recordings that we have will come later in the edit so you and know we have a lot thank of you everybody to, uh, send uh, video recordings for both uh, because of zoom there'll be a lag so we're going to be putting it in the youtube uh, link which will be put up shortly after 2 3 days so these are some photos uh, for you wait let me put some mood music so it actually looks a little more sentimental hold <laughs> on yeah senti lighting senti music mood lighting on the set so here you go this is for you nina i can't see nina you know in my window it is my screen coming in the way all that build up for nothing that supermodel nina Yeah, look at her. Just look at that supermodel. Planning the black bunk class. It's <laughs> Vinny in the middle also, no? Yeah. That's when they were at NID. This is the. This is the last day when they finished studying at NID. Full attitude, huh? I like this attitude picture. Woo! Like full can of beer will be in the back, quietly. Back. <laughs> This is uh, everybody piling on to me. <laughs> Head massage. Wow! <laughs> Before the mustaches and beards. Abhi <laughs> Abraham who's missing. Short by Alan. Carry us up. Anisha, you're back in spotlight. Okay. So I'd like to welcome all of you. Thank you for coming and taking out your time and being here at the main gate darbar. So uh, my cup of tea, chai, oh even with lipstick mark on it. Okay. Um, now as you know, Nina and Aditi are here with us, and they are the legends of their time. And I'm the lucky one who gets to ask them all the questions. I will get to ask Nina the questions anyway. You may have wanted to ask some of these questions, but I'm getting to do that. Uh, so Nina and I haven't been in touch for a long time. um and then suddenly i met her recently in february and um, many of you actually have been in touch with her and uh, she is one of those teachers who will always have a place in our heart so there were lovely messages which came in from alan prashant miranda una shaz shamik murthy uh, sanjay all these people had such wonderful things to say about you and um 
Nina, you have a definite connection with us forever. So my Nina story goes something like this. Um, when I joined NID and for a long time after that, I did not have the best drawing skills. And um, a lot of my reports said so, and uh, I got some nice, interesting reports also. But uh, then after all that, I wanted to do animation. So everybody was like, are you crazy? You can't draw. But uh, then Nina had those, that lovely film of hers, um, All About Nothing which is a model animation film. And she said, you know, there are other ways to animate and tell a story. So that's how I was introduced to model animation. And I ended up doing a lot of model animation in my life with uh, Nina as my guide at first. And um, after that, I've done quite a bit of sculpting, some other model animation and character design and taken workshops in character design. And now, in fact, she's still connected with my life because I make these cakes and I make these fondant characters on top of it. And all the detailing and all that comes from my training with Nina. I'm very sure of it. Um, so uh, I thought we could just go into um, asking Nina. Nina, I wanted to ask you about your childhood and uh, where were you born and maybe your early school days? I was born in Ahmedabad, but I went to school in Delhi. You went to school? Who is came on my screen? Get the question away. <laughs> Answer away. Yeah, so I was born in Ahmedabad. I went to school in uh, various places. I went to a school in Bharuch. Then I went to. Hey, yeah, ye bahut bar. Bar aa rahe hai. You don't have to answer, Nina. Then, how did it, it it pops up? <laughs> like I'm supposed to say something. But I went to school, uh, finally I went to school in uh, Jaipur, MGD, where Gitto's mother was my teacher. So please tell everybody your connection with MGD, Nina. MGD is <laughs> not up now. <laughs> I'm not this Darbar. <laughs> Maharani Gayatri Devi is public school in Jaipur. And so it was a mad girls department. It was an all girls school. And it still is. Okay, so, so you had the connection with uh, NID before you knew it. You had Gitto as your yeah. maths teacher and you had Gitto's mother yeah. as your maths teacher. Well, Gitto's mother was my maths teacher, but it looked like I was following Gitto because I went to MGD, then I went to NI, Fine Arts Baroda, where she, also Gitto had been. And then Gitto went to NID, then I went to NID. So it looks like I was literally <laughs> following Gitto. <laughs> And what was what was your uh, what was your childhood like? Like were your parents very creative and uh, were they into the arts at all? Not in the not in the traditional sense. But my father worked in a textile mill, so you know cloth was very close to us. And my mother did a lot of sewing, and she still does. And so I had this. Um, but I never wanted to be an artist or a filmmaker or nothing. I want to be a hairdresser. Oh! <laughs> I still cut hair. I cut my own hair. Oh, very good, Nina. Useful skill. And in NID, I gave uh, haircuts to so many guys and, and girls. If they loved me. But guys didn't care, you know. So, a whole lot of them didn't want, They wanted to save money on, their, on the barber. So, they would come to me. And I would charge them one cigarette. Those days, I used to smoke. So to take one cigarette as a fee. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so we'll go into your um, college life later. We, I, I'll uh, hand it over to Diana so she can introduce Aditi. Well, Diana, before you uh, introduce, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen and put on yeah. music again. Yeah. We've uh, 
we managed to get uh, a few of Aditi's pictures through our sources that uh, I can't reveal because then Aditi will hunt them down. So, you know, <laughs> no, but I think, oh, oh, yeah. Can you, there's a, there's a little goat there. There's a goat in that image. Yeah, Eid is coming, so the goat is coming. <laughs> Okay. So beautiful. Aditi caught red handed. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I obviously don't do this uh, very often, but uh, you know, when I was offered this opportunity, I got super excited and said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a chance to quiz it, be good. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I, I made a few notes because, you know, I, 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 like Nisha would say, I keep saying, you know, and, and so I think what, what's great is firstly, I would like to thank um, uh, Sajid for enabling all of us to be able to come together and do this because it's great. It's, it's very heartening. And of course, you know, uh, like we all know today, we have a very uh, rare and special uh, species who was often found in her natural habitat at the main gate. You know, uh, we found her there quite often. So it's quite relevant, the MD, you know, session. Now, I think uh, obviously, you know, Aditi not only played kind of kind quite a key role in shaping textile education along with Helena and uh, Gitto during the early years. I think she also um, was one of the rare ones that uh, was a student at NID. So her formative years happened there. Um, and I think, um, you know, there are lots of questions that come up. And one of those questions, I would, you know, kind of put it to her uh, giving my early experience and memory of Aditi. My first memory that comes to my mind is a walk back from the weaving studio at three o'clock in the morning. And during those days, I was a bit of a young brat that kind of, you know, took her dedication for granted. I kind of, you know, cribbed and complained and, you know, thought that, oh, you know, what's going on? Like she's putting us through all this. Oh, she had a knack to kind of keep us challenged and keep wanting, you know, we would go more. You know, there was a funny thing of, you know, let's go back to get more of this, you know. I think in hindsight, when you look at it, I think what she was doing is silently and persistently kind of uh, shaping the future resilience in at least me. And very often I found myself saying, what is she made of? What is she made of? And now I have the chance to ask her, Aditi, tell us. <laughs> tell us your story. And, you know, we, we, we know a lot about you through NID, but before that, so, so we understand you better. Tell us. We have Aditi. <coughs> I'm trying to find Aditi in all these pictures. Yeah, I can't find Aditi. I can, I can find. I have... Also, hi, Lee. Uh, you're, 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 you look like Julian today. I'm trying to 
Um, also, what else are you? Sorry, Diana, you yeah. the last uh, part of your question. <laughs> what did you ask me something? No, I said that, you know, there was very often I kind of found myself asking, damn, what is she made of? Like, you know, in frustration. And now I have the chance to actually ask you, tell us about your, you know, your early years before NID and, you know. So please tell us, Aditi. Over to you. Can you hear me, Aditi? A little bit of a lag. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, yes. I think the most uh, important uh, thing, the important years that she I went to reach. Sort of that the same. Than me, and I used to breaking up. No. Yeah. I think yeah. I think break it. Aditi, can you hear us? Do you want to try it from your phone, Aditi? I've sent you a link, Aditi. I think it's also the way you ask questions, Diana. It's so rude, no? She is logged off. I know, I know, I know. But, you know, I rarely get this chance. <laughs> she's logging back it's from her phone. You read time. Let's hit back. Where is she? She'll be logging back. She's back. She's back. In the meantime, be. See her. And back to spotlight. I'll see if you can unmute. Oh, there she is. Ah, better, better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This, okay. Is, this, is, this is coming from the laptop. From the laptop. From the laptop. It sounds like a DJ. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, as I said, uh, you know, going to Rishi Valley and spending seven years there, I think, have shaped my life immensely. And I'm so grateful to my parents who in those years when I was young and I insisted I should be sent to a boarding school. I didn't realize that it must have really taken a lot for my father who was uh, nearing his um, retirement to still uh, you know, comply and agree to send me to Rishi Valley, but uh, I'm ever grateful to my parents. And the Rishi Valley, I think, was wonderful because uh, I remember the Astachal, the five minutes of sitting on a hilltop, a flattened hill, and, and setting in the on the horizon. Uh, I think was just uh, so remarkable an experience that has stayed with me all my life. Uh, of course, I'm not as peaceful as I was then, thereafter, but nonetheless, I think I'm very grateful. And the fact that I could uh, see trees and be close to nature and the, the curriculum at Rishi Valley School, which really encouraged perhaps, uh, which introduced me to crafts and to because we did have a workshop there there was a loom there was a potter and i i think um, though i didn't clearly know that i was interested in design i didn't know what design was then but i think uh, you know these did seem to somehow bring me to nid yeah diana yeah, I mean, Aditi, tell us, tell, you know, you did mention that there were these Saturday walks that you should take. Uh, yeah, what I, what I like to do at Rishi Valley most 
uh, or what it sort of encouraged me to do was uh, to just go for a walk by myself on a Saturday afternoon, beginning say from four o'clock to till it got dark. And it was just such a wonderful experience. Rishi Valley then was not green as I have seen it uh, in some pictures now. It was uh, very, very dry. Uh, all the hills were very rocky, but nonetheless, just to be able to walk, um, you know, and see nature in its pristine, uh, you know, state, I think uh, was so wonderful to hear the birds and to, uh, to just be with trees and, you know, even though the landscape was extremely dry and rocky, so something was an experience I never had in Bombay, in Mumbai. So uh, I think that, um, uh, you know, helped perhaps in some way that is what made me inclined towards design because after Rishi Valley, I joined uh, Elphinstone College. I did two years, which was a, I was miserable. I was very unhappy. Um, and a chance... Um, uh, in you know meeting or a chance visit to Baroda brought me to Ahmedabad. In fact, that was the day when there was a newspaper advertisement which said that NID was introducing an undergraduate program. So I came to Ahmedabad and I applied and I was invited by Kumar Vyas. I was asked if I would be part of uh, an experiment would I like to be a guinea pig and be an, a part of an experiment that they were trying out is to try and see whether they were trying to explore whether they should start the undergraduate program. And so that was a three week workshop and would I be, would I like to join it? And I did join and a lot of things happened after that, but I came uh, jo thinking I would join the undergraduate, but I was lucky and very, very fortunate that I applied then for the postgraduate and I did get in after an interview with uh, Gira Sarabhai. Of course, uh, Helena gave me, asked me to do a lot of aptitude tests and then I was, she said, well, only Gira Ben can decide whether we can take you into the postgraduate program. So there I was uh, most unexpectedly in the postgraduate program. And also Aditi, I know that you you had to take a loan to, uh, you know, do the postgraduate. Yeah, I, I believe uh, one thing that uh, Gira Ben uh, told me is that uh, you're not a graduate, so we cannot pay you a stipend because the postgraduate program then was called the uh, government stipendary program in design. And um, so I would not be eligible for that stipend. So I said, well, I, would, I will take a loan. That's not a problem uh, because I can't ask my parents for money. And that's just not possible for me. So I, I will manage. That's not a problem. And, I believe that uh, Gira Ben was laughing when she rang up uh, Helena and she said, you know, you just have to take her. She is extremely determined and very stubborn. So, um, you know, that's one of the things I think I, I was uh, at NID basically because of some um, sort of feeling that some instinct, that uh, gut instinct that Gira Ben and both Helena had that I, you know, maybe I should be given a chance. And, you know, I'm very grateful because today I don't think such a thing would be possible. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to switch now to Nisha. She's got her next question yeah. lined up. Yeah. So uh, I have similar questions, but I want to go backward a little bit, uh, Nina, because, you know, we saw those very hot kill kind of photos of you in uh, college. And I want to know about those badass kind of days that you had with those, with your bell bottom pants and your, did you have a girl gang and uh, did you get into any trouble? 
all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us some stories of how you did. When I came to NID, I thought it was too tame because Baruna was wild. <laughs> Imagine Baruna. that. Yeah, we were told was NID was wild. <laughs> oh, you had to come to Baroda. I mean, this is the 70s, you know. We we were the like uh, left. What is it called? That flower power ch children, you know. Woodstock time. Entered to India in the 70s, so we were those. You know, we heard Bob Dylan, and we did. You know, we smoked pot and all that jazz. So. Yeah, and, and nobody in finance ever told us this is this is how you should fix it, you know. It was always what what are you trying to do? So it, it was a very different uh, world of course, fine arts and uh, it was um, I don't I don't remember any so story. You had, were you did you live on campus? I mean you, you stayed in a hostel on campus? No. No, no, no. My mother was uh, my parents were in uh, Baroda. After that, my father left for Dubai for some years. I mean, many years actually. But uh, and then my mother followed him later. But uh, uh, so during my college, I was at home, yeah. my undergrad. Yeah. And actually, it was good because a whole lot of people used to come home because they wanted home food. So I was I was popular Adda. for that. Your house was yeah. Adda. Always it was like that, always, even in NID, it was an Adda, your house. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, um, uh, now from, uh, from there, did you, uh, you went, how did you reach NID? How did you get there? How did that, story, what is that story? Chance. It's backstory. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, even fine arts happened by chance. I was all set to do medicine. Because I was good at studies, okay. So and I had, I had, I had actually got admission in, a, in, a, in a, what is that? Armed Forces Medical College. Oh, okay. Okay. And then, and then actually, I went to meet a school friend, an old M an MGDN who was studying in fine arts. So she said, "Come and meet me. You know, I'll show you my college." So I said, you get a degree for just sitting around painting? He said, yes. <laughs> so I said, who wants to study? And I'll forget it. I don't wear a green sari and study all day long. Forget it. So <laughs> I told my father, I think I'm going to do fine arts. So what and he was really making my, making my, changing my mind every other day. So he would ask me like, so today, what do you want to be? So it was, I was never ever sure what I wanted to be. So it was TK painting career. So similarly, I never ever wanted to go to NID. I hated the idea of going to NID. It was too, we had heard it is too elite. It is too uh, uppity, uh, what not. So, and we had once uh, Gulam Sheikh, our teacher had taken us, you know, to NID for a study tour. He, he was actually showing us all the, you know, the buildings in, uh, um, in, Ahmedabad because it had a lot of historical buildings. So we had come on a study tour and we went to NID because he said, you must see NID. And we saw all the people over there and we were like, oh, and my, my teacher told me, why don't you go to NID after your fine arts is over? I said, are you mad? I'm not going to that place. So I have heard, learned in life, never say never. So I never wanted to be a teacher. I never wanted to do, I never wanted to do animation. My teacher, so when, you, when, you went to NID, hmm? when you went to NID, Meena, you were uh, part of what uh, program? We were also like guinea pigs, like Aditi. We were also guinea pigs because there was never a program in animation before. And they suddenly realized they had this Oxbury camera sitting there for for so many years, only Narendra Patel had ever used it, and before that issue maybe. So <clears throat> it was just sitting there, and they, the uh, Claire Weeks had come, and so they thought, you know, Claire Weeks had come from Disney, so they thought, let's have a program in animation, and so there was a, you know, uh, whatever, some um, 
newspaper or something. I never even saw it. My teacher saw it. And then my teacher came and gave me that form and said, Jao, NID Jao. That's how I came. <laughs> and then when you came, that was very different, right? From what it is, what it was even when we were there. Oh, yeah. NID was a very different place. I mean, it was like, um, I was used to being 10 people in a class. And here, there were, we were just four or five people in the class. You know, we're not even that many. Yeah, faculty and, ratio was apparently very skewed. Yeah, we had teachers and, you know, uh, and uh, I mean, I, I was totally proven wrong, you know, uh, of my, uh, you know, views on NID before, like from afar. So once I was there, it, it was amazing. I mean, it was an amazing experience. And, and uh, so, so much of what I am today is also because of NID. And your classmates were Bini and... Uh... Bini, Chita, we were three musketeers. We were called the three musketeers because we also stayed together and, you know, uh, and we were in the animation together. So, uh, and we you know, like you guys have a batch batch, but our batch, we used to align our batch with uh, Kajuri Jain and, you know, those, because Radhi Farik, they were all like, they joined at the same time that we did. So we would think that we would be their batch, but we were, we were, uh, I don't know, we were not even post-grad, we were nothing. We were just people there doing animation. Ammunition. Ammunition. <laughs> so, um, uh, Diana, would you like to ask uh, ask Aditi about her teaching there, or should I ask Meena and then you want to move to Aditi? No, no. I mean, we could. I, I think there are, there's a very similar kind of um, you know the, the the fact that it was the teaching and learning kind of blended into each other. I think um, you know when you speak to Aditi, it, it comes across very much like that, where you know her peer group as well was, you know, where they were teaching simultaneously doing, you know, projects, uh, you know, for the mills. And so Aditi, do you want to just run us through, you know, I, I think there's somebody who's also asked a question where we said, how did you come to NID? I think, you know, textiles at NID. So I think what would be good is, you know, where you kind of, um, you know, tell us about, uh, you know, your initial uh, few of these things where you were brought in as a faculty trainee with Nito and uh, obviously with Helena as well. So, you know. Yeah. Um, when, when I was there for this three week workshop that uh, Kumar had asked me to participate in, in one of the days I wandered into this lovely big uh, room uh, with lots of uh, you know, looms, uh, lots of tables with the table looms and the, the windows overlooking the front lawn. So I walked into this place and I was uh, amazed that you could uh, work there because I saw some one or two people weaving on the loom and there was no teacher. They were just weaving by themselves and it was was something that, uh, you know, I was immediately attracted to that here, if I learned, probably if I learned weaving, um, and I did learn weaving there, I asked uh, Shubrat, I met Shubrata Bhomik, who said, yeah, I can teach you weaving. And, um, you know, once uh, he sort of, I got to weave on the loom and put in some yarns and, you know, figure uh, after he, demonstrated to me how it was, uh, how to weave. And I tried it, I enjoyed it immensely. And I thought, my God, this is what I want to do. This is something that I can come to a place and work as long as I wanted, as much as I wanted, all the time, all day and night, if I wanted, which I didn't get this feeling when I was in Elphinstown College. I, I was miserable. I didn't have any friends. There was nothing that stimulated my mind. And here was something, just the joy of making something with your hand, with weaving yarns. And you immediately sort of saw something, uh, you know, happen on the loom. You saw colors, you saw texture. 
I think it just blew my mind. And, you know, that's when I decided that this is what I wanted to do. Uh, I still didn't know design. I knew uh, we had, there was a loom, a large loom at Rishi Valley in the workshop. And we were taught how to weave. It was not the same how I experienced it when I came to NID. And um, what was uh, great fun was that you asked your neighbor, you asked your peers uh, to teach you how to do the various steps. You know, you didn't have to go to a class, to, you didn't have to attend a very formal class. It just happened so organically and you learned all the time, of course, a lot of the learning was through trial and error. Uh, but I think the seeds to explore, to experiment, uh, to actually receive a, a, a verification from a very tactile kind of sensation that something like this works. You know, you immediately knew you didn't need much technical information to know that this sort of surface is too tight because once you took off the sample of the loom, you, you knew whether, you know, uh, you had done something which was uh, dimension, had dimensional stability. Of course, I learned the word much later, but you got, uh, I think this tacit learning, I found that very exciting. But Aditi, when you're saying that you didn't need the technical, uh, this thing, I know that that came story. later. That came later. I wasn't even uh, enrolled as a student when I, uh, you know, learned when I started weaving. So I had no idea that I was going to join NID. I just knew that I was there for this three-week workshop. It's only after that that uh, I was. I thought I could explore, and I was told by Shubrata Bhomik that you know, if this is what you want to do, and you know, you can't uh, afford to study in the undergraduate program, but there is a, uh, you know, why don't you try and see if that's possible for you to get an opportunity to join that. So this is where I made that shift. But I think the, the sheer joy and the excitement of uh, that weaving gave me, um, I, I was not, I, there was nothing pre-planned about it. I didn't know and there was no information. It was just sheer experience. And, uh, and you, 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 you know it only when you have done it. That's what I but mean. The technical things came no, much no, I, later. I, I, my question was on another technical um, question, which is when, when Ranjan insisted that he needs to teach the textile girls yeah. textile. So tell us about, you know, tell the us about learning years. Yeah, the learning years, I think the two years that was uh, where we were known to be students, um, as we were learning there and we were there as students, I think was um, very, very exciting. We had a very simple program of two days uh, upstairs uh, in the graphic studio, which we cast took and then the rest of the th week the three days was downstairs with Helena in the weaving studio and from those just a very simple program uh, unfolded I think a very very organic and exciting uh, education program um, which was to become the foundation for our uh, e even for the textile design curriculum thereafter and uh, we learned graphic from uh, basic design from Vikas, who was a wonderful teacher and uh, shared a lot of uh, things besides uh, the composition that we were doing, music, and you know he would point out to certain references and books. So all of that became part of learning, and. Uh, one day uh, we had every Saturday was a music appreciation that was conducted in a beautiful auditorium, uh, very close to the graphic studio. And uh, that was uh, an event that we all looked, looked forward to. It was basically for the undergraduate program, but at that time NID being very fluid and flexible, we were also allowed to attend those programs. And one day, 
uh, Ranjan suggested, who was a furniture design uh, student in the postgraduate program and who shared the same studio space as, the, as where the graphic students were seated. And in fact, the graphic studio was empty because SM and Choksi, they were all uh, had they had, were going to Basel. So the studio was quite empty and we would occupy it from textiles uh, first half of the week. Uh, week. And one day, uh, Ranjan said that, you know, textile students, there were four of us in the class, uh, the textile students must also learn to draw interiors because their textiles will be used in spaces and they must learn, you know, technical drawing. So Vikas, why don't they learn that? And Vikas said, well, I don't know. Uh, can you teach? If you can teach, then please teach them. So that's how our uh, music appreciation sessions were exchanged for attending uh, the class that Ranjan took. And we were sort of both, Gitto and I were uh, very crestfallen because we looked forward to the music appreciation classes. And Ranjan said, okay, maybe we have a solution here. And he asked Vikas if they could leave the auditorium door to the auditorium open so that we could hear the music uh, wafting out of the room and yet do the technical drawing. So yes, learning was from peers, learning was from uh, students who were, uh, you know, a little more advanced than you, or we had uh, uh, classmates like Kurma Rao, who was from a weaver's family. And in the daytime, he would teach students uh, the first batch, which is Errol and that batch, he would teach them fabric structure. In the afternoon, he would attend composition classes, which were, were under Vikas. There was another uh, faculty member called uh, from Banaras, from the Weaver Service Center, Panipat. And he would teach us about brocades and jacquard in, uh, you know, as part of our technical studies. And in the afternoon, he would learn composition. So uh, you continued your education, uh, no matter what label you had, whether you were a student or a faculty. And you also imparted uh, training to uh, people or to your peers, or to students, uh, knowledge that you had. So. Mr. Bharat Lal, who came from Panipat, knew was an expert in brocade weaving and the jacquard system was used for weaving um, brocades. So he told uh, taught us, gave us technical inputs while he learned composition and basic design, which he never was exposed to before in his professional career. So I think it was... Uh, it was amazing. I don't think uh, such an experiment happened anywhere else in the world. I don't think so. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that that's that that learning through you know exploration and self discovery was what was yeah. incredible. No, I mean I'm sure Nina has a few sort of uh, stories as well. Uh, Nisha, over to you. Do you want to probe yeah, some? I want to ask Nina some questions. Nina, um, okay, so now I have a, I, I was wondering, after you finished studying at uh, NID, the course got over, then um, how come you decided on teaching? So teaching wasn't uh, very well paying, right, then or now or anything. So how come you didn't go into advertising or making some big films and all that in those days? Actually, one stop program got over, which was like a two and a half years workshop, it was called, two and a half years of workshop. And um, we all went home, I mean, we disappeared from NID. But then we got a letter one day saying, you know, Ishu Patel is here and, you know, you're going to do a workshop with him, you want to come. So I was doing nothing. I, was, I had gone back to painting. Because those days, if you had to make a film, you, you could only do it on celluloid. Mm -hmm. And you needed a camera to shoot it on. So there was no way that uh, I could have gone home and, and done my own animation. 
So when Ishu Patel did this workshop with us, he kind of advised uh, NID to, you know, start an animation program and not let go of us. And that is how, you know, we, we were pushed into teaching. We were not, uh, ex you know, we were very scared. We said, no, 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 how will we teach? We only learned for two and a half years. But then there was this uh, UNDP fellowship. And uh, because I remember <laughs> putting me in a corner and saying, why do you want, you know, why, why don't you go on this UNDP thing and then, you know, you can come back and, you know, you can set up the program and, you know, do a proper, actually we started something, but it was once in every altar year, there was some, some experiment of that kind also. But then um, there was a contract we signed and uh, I was not very keen to do that, but um, I think I was convinced by Rikas and so was Bini. And uh, so after that training that we had, and it was a fantastic exposure, that uh, we, we, we got excited about putting a curriculum uh, together and you know, putting the program together. So initially it was like, you know, all the things that we thought we didn't learn or we should have learned it this way or that way. And then we had seen things also in other colleges. So it, it was, um, like I told you before, for all the things that I've ever done, you know, it's, it's always been um, pushed into something, not something that I wanted to do. So it, uh, I got into teaching totally by chance. And, and, and actually there wasn't that much an animator could do in those days, you know. Uh, uh, there wasn't... Uh, there wasn't a television industry. There was only Ram Mohan. So if yeah. you if you work outside, you had to go to Ram Mohan. And I was, I mean, I love, I, I, I really respected Ram Mohan, but I really didn't want to do advertising. I didn't want to put froth on soap. That was not was something I wanted to do. Yeah. So that that decided for me that yeah, okay, I'm gonna teach. That's how. And so while you were there, you while you were at NID uh, teaching, you were making films also, uh, uh, making some yes. of your own. That was the beauty of NID those days is that you know you you could not practice without you cannot preach without practicing. You know, so you had to practice. You, if you wanted to teach film, you had to make films. So we were constantly working on projects and. I had opportunities to work on amazing uh, projects. There was uh, this energy from life, which Vikas was uh, heading. And uh, I made a film on um, energy from the atom. I remember that so well, because during that project, I got to see a nuclear reactor, the insides of you know a place where all these things happen and war, all those things and, and met people. I mean the kind of research which we did, you know, and even saw an electron microscope to, to get an image of something up close, you know, like, because the story demanded that. But, you know, nothing was impossible. I mean, nothing was impossible. If you said, like, I think I need to study this, I think I need to visit here. Okay, go. Wow. Go ahead. Yeah. And how did you start? Uh, how did you get into model animation? How did you? Uh, how did that come to you? Okay, that happened because of the UNDP fellowship. Um, um, uh, we were sent like Bini went to England, and I went to I went to Belgium and uh, Amsterdam and and England, and then uh, because Roger Noak. Who, who had come as an external professor to teach us. He was in England at this, uh, and he arranged for us to, you know, get some exposure to model animation. So um, he invited Joan Ashworth, who later went on to head the RCA you know, animation department. So she was that time studying in the NFTS, in the National Film and Television School at Beaconsfield and she came and she and Kathy. So these two people were still very much my friends and in my life, even today. They, uh, they taught me 
uh, how to do, and then we invited them to uh, NID. Okay. And uh, so that all about nothing film could not have happened without their inputs, you know, and, and the way they taught us. And, and they not only taught me, I mean, once they came to NID, they had a workshop for all our students and, you know, some of them uh, were even our staff, but it, it was something incredible to, you know, have them over. So that's how I, I, I got into this stop frame, what is now called stop frame. We used to call it model animation. Now people call it stop frame animation. Okay. So like I said, you're, you were my inspiration for starting doing anything stop frame and uh, doing my, not claymation. I, those days, remember, we used latex and rubber stall and all those things to make our models always experimenting to see what will work and I remember you showing me the wire frame structures and all those things that's what i had learned so that's what yeah, I and, yeah and for, i've i've taught many children that same wire frame structure <laughs> in my and children's school specialized so beautifully now i mean I yeah now it's at some other level now suresh eek suresh and all are some other planet i love he knows uh, you know what he yeah. does with her. Amazing. Yeah. So talking about students, so you're in touch with a lot of students and, um, and uh, you know, you, I mean, you, you've told me that, you know, you, you've actually been to some people's exhibitions, like Alan was saying that you went to see his exhibition, which he had put up and, um, you know, Prashant also remember, all of us, everybody, all of us remember you very fondly, but um, I have one, uh, one legendary report that you wrote for one of your students, which I want to share. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I feel that if you didn't, if you didn't be, you know, you want where you are, you should have been a writer. You should have been a writer or you like you, you can give Shobha Day a run for her money for sure. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Shamik sent me a copy of this and I'm only reading a little part, part of this, okay? So uh, this was for his illustration course and um, this there's one segment which is attention to detail. This area does not even receive a passing glance from Shamik. He mirrors that veritable ostrich with his head in the sand when it comes to details. One cannot be sure whether it is oversight or sheer irreverence that makes him so reckless with content, formats, typography, choice of paper, etc. Now, my question to you, Nina, is how could you be so mean to Shamik? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> This, this wasn't, I've, I've preserved this report for like, you know, more than 20 years, just because it's so special. It made us feel special. It was settling codes that I've done this to Nisha. It's like, his voice is deep. It was, it was actually. <laughs> uh, but it shattered um, you, right, Shamik? It's made you stronger. It has made me stronger. And just like, I remember that that report uh, when I went for industrial training, like maybe or after Arnab and then he who was like the director of time, they would like look at that report, it's like framed in the office, and then they would write a line inspired by that report at the end of each day, and then they, and then that became the industrial training report. So it has it, it was it was that was a legendary repeat that I got. Oh yeah, you got to repeat for the course at the end of that. <laughs> not to mention. <laughs> <laughs> Nina, but you know, otherwise you were very kind to us. Just these reports uh, now. No, well, you know, after I came to IBC, um, one of my students from NID, he was also my classmate because we both did our PhD together, Girish Dalvi. And he saw me teaching one day, he said, you are so nice to these people, you made me Cried, my jury. How can you be so nice to these guys? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was mean. I'm really sorry, Shomi. No, no, no. I appreciate it. It's, it's a precious treasure 
that I have in this blue file right here. <laughs> so, so um, Aditi, do you have any such scaling? Yeah, I think uh, I think talking about scaling <laughs> to us is a is a great subject to touch upon. <laughs> <laughs> And we all textile students know that Aditi has her ways, and I can say that I've never come out of a presentation with Aditi not pulling my hair out and saying, "Shit, it's all fallen apart. Now let's start again." And uh, you know, it was a trick. She was obviously she had she knew what she was doing. So tell us, Aditi, what is the trick? You know, how does it work? There is a you know larger game plan. I'm sure. you figured that one out tell us well i don't know i <laughs> um i hope i have been kind sometimes at least uh, um but so i remember I that say, uh, have your way you have your way of making sure that you know we are gently but very assertively nudged and you know you kind of just get us to deliver that at discretionary effort that you want from all of us so yeah. so I, i i think yeah so it's not we we're not saying you mean no yeah. no i i think we were, uh, we were very I, all of a lot of students generations of students at nid i think we are extremely uh, fortunate that we had helena perin tupa a finnish designer as a teacher i think she is an amazing she was an amazing human being she was an amazing teacher i think she um believed in what she believed in and she was very unconventional very innovative i think she set aside all uh, precedents or uh, uh, all never went by hierarchy and so on so we even had an antique dealer manu bhai who would come and teach us uh, give us inputs in traditional indian textiles so she was unconventional and thank god for that because um, you know um, along with her we were in with her on this journey of discovering and and the fact that we recognized that our the indian traditions were a great learning resource so i think learning by doing learning through self discovery these are some things that she emphasized on very very strongly and i think uh, these are also some things that uh, i continued and so did a lot of us as faculty there uh, while we were under training there we continued so i i used to think that whenever uh, students showed their work during um, a presentation or any evaluation the idea is to um, help the student you know push their boundaries as much as is possible uh, i don't know if uh, that's the right thing to do because uh, you know perhaps they would have done it anyway uh, you know in their professional career and afterwards it's not necessary that they must do it then when they are in that class and in that course perhaps they can learn it in the next class uh, i wish i had also thought of it that way so i would not have given students a repeat but um, you know <laughs> the intention sometimes is that you think that you know i must be honest without really um, you know breaking the person's uh, spirit and and i i don't know how else i could have done it just to say okay okay it's good fine chalta hai let's go ahead it was never an option so no I but think, yeah yeah i i think that um, you know when i think of uh, you know a lot of us actually say this that there is a aditi voice in your head you know which is quite quite an interesting uh, term for us textile people you know we have these these voices and they are like where you thrown these things that are saying okay you know who are, who's your user all of that you know it's kind of it's mm -hmm. it's all there but i i feel that uh, you know i still when i look at you i 
it's not just a mentor that you go to for an answer you know it's more like a coach which is you know who's standing you know by this football field and saying okay you know what yeah you you know you you doing a crack job there you need to so i i feel that um, that that we need we needed that kind of hard uh, how do you say thing to build that resilience to go out in the industry and literally i i mean i think that uh, textiles and you know all the other products that come out of textiles it's a, it's a very competitive area but you know it gives you this um, formative preparatory ground of saying you know what bring it on and i think having gone and done that with aditi it give it's a pre- prepar- I, so i don't think you've been hard as such aditi so it's all good yeah. <laughs> i think the you know um, the foundation program and i think all the, the various disciplines that we had at nid i think we did have there was a great rigor in the learning and i think that's something that uh, was uh, was needed very much in textiles i think there was no just one perfect answer or one way to uh, resolve something or to do to find a solution that's uh, you know that has makes economic sense that makes makes aesthetic sense that makes sense from so many points of view so i think exploration 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 i, I don't <laughs> i don't know if there was there is even today another way you know no it's so i think uh, i think it's uh, it's being part of a larger multidisciplinary workshop it's having so many different people working together i think it's all of that environment i think the learning culture at nid the fact that the workshops occupied the largest space uh, i think uh, so many of these things go to you know enforce that value um, i don't know about being a coach but uh, yeah I, and i think also the fact that uh, as i said since helena stressed on self discovery you know go and find out i remember when the whole of nid all the disciplines and all the whole semester had turned into uh, an agri expo semester you know everybody's program was to work on this professional project i was sent to the northeast for three months and i had to go and the client was the northeastern council in shillong that's all i knew so i packed my bags and you know i uh, was ready to go because three months was a long time to be away and be on my own um, and then i asked helena i just about asked her i said what am i supposed to do and what she said oh you'll find out go there and find out you know and of course there were lots of discussions after that and you know while i was there by snail mail the letters and my negatives were sent because i went on a uh, you know presentation uh, or went on a um, project where i had to document and do a survey of all the seven states and to uh, find out in what ways could uh, would nid as well as textile education be engaged with the craft sector in the northeast so i i think i was a novice in documentation i just happened to have a book with me by levi strauss called uh, twist tropic and that's all that was all my preparation for doing the uh, documentation the rest of it was to figure out on my own to you know and i i think a lot of that meant that you know you had to uh, you know find out you to apply design process you to be observant you have to discuss you have to take a brief you know and a lot of learning uh, that happened i don't know if i answered your question but yes i think the the learning climate and i think all the disciplines especially the foundation program i think there was a great rigor in learning that uh, and textiles i think we had a very strong foundation uh, in weaving and print uh, because of helena and in uh, composition and color and you know which led to print design from vikas 
that I think all the other, uh, you know, uh, inputs got layered over this uh, with uh, participation or with uh, the participation of colleagues from different disciplines. So came the context design project and the context based learning. And I think one of the, I think the textile department was also, I think the first one to take the classroom to the field. Uh, Mr. Bridge Bhushan Basin was then the direct managing director of Gurjari of Gujarat uh, State Handloom and Handicraft Development Corporation uh, would often say to Helena, why don't you send your students to Kutch? There is so much to learn here. There is so much that uh, they can, you know, base their learning from and with uh, learn from the with the crafts people here. That uh, I think that's how we brought a lot of real life projects into the classroom. And also, I think the format of the diploma project I, I think is something that came from textiles. Though the product design had a very different format in which they did their diploma projects. The textiles were uh, one where we found partnership with the craft industry and the handloom and the handicraft uh, sector. And it was very rewarding and was much easier to work with this sector than with the mills. Also, Aditi, tell us something more about, you know, that they it was always a prototype culture where you know you all made these yes. uh, carpets. You know it was it was. Yeah. You know, we had a yeah. workshop where there were weavers, and I know that you know you still remember names of weavers who wove and you know um, uh, the the full kari design that uh, Vikas's father bought, and you know so those yeah. are like really uh, incredible memories that you know um, just yeah. the fact that you all could make the product and. Mm. and sell it uh, and have that proximity yeah. to understand the user. Yeah. Uh, tell mm. us a little bit more about that. So I, I think to emphasize uh, learning by doing or learning to know huh? uh, was and learning to do was sort of uh, uh, dualities. So uh, it was very important at that point because NID had a design work, uh, design shop and this was uh, Gira Ben's idea that there would need to be this workshop which where students and faculty, firstly it was the faculty and uh, the postgraduate students would uh, develop designs and get uh, that experience and that these designs would be sold in the shop. So that's why she had invited Nelly Setna to set up the uh, department uh, uh, first, she had, of course, asked Nelly Setna, an eminent uh, designer who had uh, just come back from Cranbrook Academy of Art in the US, and that's where she had met Helena. And Nelly wasn't keen to come and set up the education uh, part of the textile uh, department, but she was very open and she did set up the textile workshop. And she suggested that uh, Helena would be a much better uh, person to come and set up the textile faculty and the textile education program. So the textile workshop was, uh, I think our curriculum was largely based on developing designs for the workshop because there were about 20 to uh, 25 looms and weavers and they had to have work to do constantly because they were paid based on the work that they did. And these designs were then sold in the design workshop. And I remember uh, right throughout our two years, uh, we were, we learned by developing designs, furnishings, home furnishings, draperies, a lot of rugs and carpets because we had uh, 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 craftsmen from Mirzapur, which is the hub of uh, the carpet weaving center in India. And uh, he, there was a vertical loom on which he did uh, figurative, he could uh, weave figurative carpets. And this is, uh, you know, was very exciting because 
uh, the technique didn't is not what we learned first. We learned the concept first because Vikas, I remember the first exercise he gave me in, uh, on, I think the first class that I uh, uh, attended was where he said, go to the workshop, meet Mr. B.M. Anand, and he will give you a lot of yarns which you have to bring to the studio. So I collected all the yarns and I also asked Mr. Anand uh, as to how uh, this carpet was going to be woven, which I had to do as an exercise. So he explained to me because there was a weaver there who was actually weaving a carpet. And I understood very, very uh, sort of uh, briefly and in a very general way how it was done. And I brought all these samples of yarns and I had to do an exercise based on squares, which um, would then be made into a carpet. So our first, uh, learn, our first basic exercises, I remember in color, was also an exercise which ended up being suitable for a carpet which was woven and sold in the shop, say, after four days later. And I remember that uh, Mr. Anand would often call, uh, send a message to Professor B.V. Doshi, the architect, and would tell him that, sir, we have uh, four more carpets today. And he would sort of come uh, very excited and would buy most of them. And uh, Gipto, uh, these designs were produced by Gipto. They were so wonderful and uh, so in incredibly, what would I say, Gitto is a colorist, so it was amazing the way in which she, I think, applied all what she learned at Baroda, and it just designed, textile design just made her um, talents flower, and these beautiful carpets were then uh, lapped up by B.V. Doshi, and I remember one uh, flat rug that she had made based on uh, Fulkari that she had, she and I, Helena would take us to the Calico Museum, which was across the river in the Calico Mill compound. And every Sunday, we used to accompany Helena to the museum. And one of the sketches that Gitto had made, uh, and based on it, she developed a wonderful uh, rug, which uh, Vikas's father, the uh, eminent painter Madhav Satvalikar, he uh, had purchased. And I uh, remember we looked at it and it was a great joy to see your own composition become a rug and then it got bought over also very quickly. So I think um, the fact that you learned by testing and validating your mm -hmm. concept or your paper sketch was very ingrained in the textile department. It was part of learning by doing, this mantra learning by doing but yeah. it had a lot of uh, uh, values embedded in it. So, you, you know, because uh, the product had to be sold. Of course, oh, I no. remember once, um, uh, you know, uh, Gautam Bhai's brother, uh, he came back with a, a dari in his, a, a pile carpet in his hand and his kurta, white kurta had sort of blue sort of stains on it, not stains but uh, the color had rubbed off on uh, you know on his kurta so of course such mishaps also happen that our color used to run but nonetheless uh, you know otherwise in terms of structure in terms of uh, re realizing a concept and going from the abstract to the real I mean this is something which we learned uh, because of the design shop so the design shop afforded learning for textile students, for ceramic students, furniture, all of these were uh, produced and sold in the design uh, shop. I think not only that, it's also obviously stayed with you and you have such vivid memories of, you know, of the Fulkari composition. And, you know, I, yeah. I, I think that's, that's an incredible, uh, you know, takeaway. I, I mean, I don't remember my assignments that well but yeah some of them I do some, the ones yeah. that I've actually yeah. had to redo yeah well, in fact Helena would uh, tell us at the beginning of the year that at the end of the year we had to have a textile show so uh, 
uh, the we in the textile show we would make of course vikas design the card uh, invitation card and we would take these invitation cards and distribute it and invite people from the mills uh, there were a lot of mills and we went and this was one time where we could uh, invite them to the campus and this happened i think for the first two three years so uh, prototype making you know testing our ideas you know and and these prototypes were not made by the workshop for the show we had to make all of these prototypes ourselves so you must have heard stories where errol once he occupied the loom uh, it was very difficult to take him off the loom you know he would just keep producing and weaving and we had to wait all the other students had to wait in a queue but there was this uh, sort of uh, it was contagious this feeling of uh, you know weaving and helena would sit on the loom she would whistle um, uh, and she was very very good at whistling and she would whistle some symphony and some uh, you know classical composition while she was weaving so this was something that we learned uh, and she demonstrated to us how to weave how to tie the pedals i think which is an important part of learning which uh, i think over the years happened less because we had the workshop staff that uh, uh, sort of took took those uh, roles over took over those roles what is earlier the teacher Nisha, no. had to think, do uh, yeah nisha yeah. might have some uh, yes, uh, questions for uh, you know uh, nina, nina. so you know nina yeah nisha over to you mm. so nina um so i i know that after after we left you went on a sabbatical and you did went to um syracuse new york and you did your um got a full breadth scholarship and you went there um what what did you gain from there i mean what was your uh, take away from that time that you had there because I, i don't know what happened after i left i just lost touch with you it was a time when um, it was a very interesting time to have gone to study because um um uh, gym and no, not gym hot mail just happened then you know hot mail happened uh, i still have a hot mail account Yeah. Oh, you do. Yeah. Yeah. So email happened, and uh, email happened. You know things that weren't there before. So this, uh, and and therefore, of course, this whole idea of new media. You know. Yeah. So uh, that one year was a really nice uh, experience. In first of all, becoming a student, I I realized how. how you have to learn to be a student you know i had been teaching for so many years yeah. but uh, when i went there as a student i could empathize with my students back home like man how hard it is to be a student to have you know like 10 minutes come up with an idea you know 15 minutes make a sketch of something or you know like have a script or something ready and so It was it's a it was quite humbling you know to to and also I was pitched I was I was in my I was forty then you know when I went and my stu my classmates were all in their twenties so <laughs> it was uh, quite challenging also to you know and and humbling and you know they did so much better than me you know in so many ways so yeah. it was a big learning experience. i was also exposed to a lot of stuff and you know so when i came back um uh, because said you know why don't you think of a program in multimedia or new media you know that it was called multimedia then but you know we called it new media ultimately so it it it, it gave me an opportunity to kind of reinvent myself in some sense but also to to realize what is it that i wanted to do you know and and how to you know engage with this new technology because uh, 
for the longest time, you know, we were resisting it. We were thinking that oh, these computers will be there and they'll be gone. You know, I remember that only Ranjan, man, he, he believed in the new technology. I mean, he was really at the forefront of it all. And, you know, but those little Macs that he, you know, installed in that um, room and, you know, you would get so excited. See, I can do animation. Look at this. You can do animation like this. And we said, but such five, eight colors only, Ranjan. Only eight colors. No, no, it will get better. You're, you're so right. <laughs> Today, I've been, I've been so much of my work happens on the computer. But so that was, that was quite an experience, you know, going there and... Uh, so, and so after that, you used, you said you came back and you started uh, using that new media in your, uh, in making your film. I worked on a curriculum. No, my, okay. all my, I, actually I started working for myself only after I left NID. Okay. Which was when? How many years after this was, uh, after the Fulbright? I mean, after you came back from Syracuse, how many years were you at NI? I came back in 98, I think. I left in 2006. Oh, okay. I was there. I was there quite yeah. a lot. Uh, some time. But, um, so I was involved in, you know, the curriculum development for uh, the new media program. And, uh, and so on. And, but uh, we also then, uh, you know, we were doing so many projects uh, for the television and, and it was uh, useful, you know, to have that background. Yeah. I think it has to be alive to the changes you know, and, and move with the changes. And so I had a question for you, which was, you know, you being this um, bohemian flower child and, uh, you know, this from... MSU and then NIB, how did you end up with all these engineer types in IDC? <laughs> <laughs> and how was well, it being there? Uh, I, I decided I needed to reinvent myself. I, every 10 years, I feel I need to reinvent myself. So then it was time because everything I did, it was just going through the motions. It was just doing the same thing over and over again. And I get very impatient with that. So. Uh, I thought I would pursue a PhD. So that is how I came to IDC. But then uh, they, they liked me a lot out here and they said, why don't you join us? So I love Bombay. I really love being in Bombay. So I, I thought it was time to move. It was, it was the right time to move. And I, I'm glad I made the decision because I, I wouldn't have done so many things if I had... Uh, not left. Yeah, I mean, and it's a fantastic place um, for students. Oh, okay. So you have faculty give all their lives just teaching and you know doing things. They they don't get that much time to do their own, um, you know, uh, creative work. I mean, we did, we did, we worked, but only if there were projects, you know. And in, in some disciplines, it, it's really wonderful, you know, like he's telling such wonderful stories about, you know, how they were constantly making things for uh, somebody or the other. Animation, unfortunately, did not have that much of a, you know, uh, demand. We did, we did TV channels, identities, we did uh, short films, you know, we did for adult literacy, and we did for the family he uh, health, uh, you know, family welfare and health, you know, kind of things. And in between, if there was time, we, we did something of our own also. Nobody stopped us. We had to find the time and we were so uh, involved in teaching and, you know, and being things, um, you know, uh, facilitating, you know, yeah. the love. Yeah. And, and so inviting people from all over the world to come and teach. You know, and uh, and and to have you know this kind of uh, life uh, life projects for our students also. Okay. So you, now, then, when you move to IDC as well, you you have you were saying that some of your students are uh, working, help you with some of your films as well. The IDC. And I 
NID is the part of my life. I mean, anybody from NID is like a biradari, you know, even if people I don't know, like right now I have a wonderful researcher working with me. Her name is Deepani. She, I never met her because she, she did, uh, you know, she finished from NID. I, we lost enough. Diana, you want to ask? Yeah, I think, um, I think on the, you know, one of the things that uh, so, Aditi is always uh, so kind of, of, oh, there, she's back. Nina's back, I think. Yeah. Nina, are you back? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, okay, we got, we lost you for a bit. Oh, okay. So, so. <laughs> yeah. so what I was telling you was, yeah, many NID people, um, like being in Bombay, I'm in touch with so many, I mean, so many of them come the I have worked on projects, uh, Sonali Bhatia. Uh, He's on this been... call, I think. Sorry? I think Sonali is on this call, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. Oh, hi, Sonali. Hello. Sonali is a producer. She's also one person who, who I always show my films to, to get her feedback because she gives excellent feedback and uh, to whatever I do, any films I work on, I, uh, I always call her. And Pushi has uh, written some, uh, you know, scripts for me, uh, for my film that got the national award. It's thanks to the kind of wonderful, you know, script that he wrote. And of course, the, you know, the and then, that. and now you are now um, you uh, you are working on some uh, on an online course. You were saying. Oh yeah, since four years I've been involved in this online education because I felt that lots of people are interested in learning about design and the design. You know, there aren't that many design. I mean, our design schools can only take that many students. And the other design schools are charging a hell of a lot, you know, to students. So uh, I thought that it was important that, especially people who can't go to school anymore, you know, clients who don't know how to work with designers, they need to understand design. So, so I made an online course called Understanding Design, and it is free. Anyone can can go online and learn. And we have till today twelve thousand learners. Wow. Yeah. Lots of colleges are using it. And the idea is that, you know, we have this call online and now it's become even more relevant because everybody is going online. So, but my idea was not to make it only online, but to actually offer it as a content, as a resource for various colleges, you know, who can, the students can access the content and then the, the teachers can guide them on projects. And those projects can be localized to the needs of, of their region or wherever they are, you know. So currently I'm working on um, another course, which is called Understanding Ethnography, which I think is going to be very useful uh, for, uh, you know, design students, especially when we talk about environmental exposure and stuff like that, you know, how to, how to interact with other people, you know, and how to be respectful and all the ethics involved and how do you, you know, learn about others without imposing and intervening, you know, that kind of thing. So for that, uh, Sonali has been our producer and uh, she's, been, she's directed the shooting and the, you know, the uh, art uh, direction. Uh, I'm just amazed at the, the way NID uh, students just reach out, you know, uh, and, and you have, I, and even Prashant Miranda, you said that was so telling yeah, me that he did so something. I wanted, I wanted to show how drawing can be a way of observing. So I, I just called up Prashant and uh, he said, yeah, I'll do it. Wow. So he sent me all his work that is there and he gave a little, uh, you know, uh, interview also on, he shot it himself and sent it to me. And uh, then there was something wrong with the sound and he did it all over again. I mean, it's incredible. And it's, I am so thrilled with the work that all these people are doing, like Alan and Charles and 
I mean, every all of you guys. I mean, it's just amazing work. Even Chamik, Chamik, you also have done well. <laughs> Thanks, man. Whatever I'm hiding. And how old are you? Uh, I think um, uh, I would like to butt in. Is that okay? Already butt in. Yeah. yeah. I think we'll. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think um, I just had a last question for Aditi, and then we can throw it open to everybody else. And you know, I know that uh, you know Mozi is a strict timekeeper, so yeah, let's just stick with a bit of time. I know that Aditi is doing a very interesting research project, and always that's you know, documentation has been her sort of key forte. So Aditi, tell us about the current uh, research project that you've done. You know where you've done that exhibition and the documentation. Tell us more about it. Are you there? Aditi? We've lost Aditi. Aditi? Yeah. Ah, there. She's there. She's there. She's there. <laughs> so did you did you Hello? miss me? Repeat my question, Aditi. No, no, I can hear you. Um, uh, this is a project that I did uh, the, from, say, the last two, three years. I've been doing this for Abhay Mangaldas at his uh, heritage resort called uh, House of MG. And he had this idea that uh, his mother's and grandmother's uh, wardrobe, consisting of saris and shawls, uh, was wondering if that in some way could become... Um, a part of a collection or would it be possible to display it? What can be done? So I worked on it and uh, the ideas, the, of course, I couldn't uh, get to know from them because neither of them were uh, there. Uh, his mother passed away in 2017 and his grandmother, Lina Sarabai, started Shreya's foundation. She had passed away in 2012. But from uh, looking at the saris and analyzing them and studying them, I thought if we could tell a larger or a bigger, draw a bigger canvas of um, crafts and of the deep connect that is there between the makers and the craftsmen, the uh, object and the people for whom these saris and shawls are made. So it's a tribute both to the spinners, weavers, dyers, and crafts communities, as well as to Anjali Mangaldas and uh, Lina Mangaldas. And these are, I instead of doing <laughs> one permanent <laughs> exhibition, these are three uh, rotating exhibitions called, the one is called, the first one that was um, mounted was called the art of the loom, and it pays tribute to the skills of the spinners, dyers, weavers um, uh, of, uh, of India. The second one is painting with threads. So this is about figurative textiles, uh, ikat, uh, both woven and embroidered, and of course the pashmina shawls. And the third one is a palette of whites because whites have such different uh, symbol has have such different meanings in Indian uh, in, in culture and especially white with different colors and so on. Uh, white with gold, white with red, white you know with black. So I thought also that there's no one single white. There are so many whites. And it, it, these are uh, uh, on display at their uh, House of NG gallery. They have, uh, here's what is called the Ahmedabad trunk. So this is uh, part of the Ahmedabad trunk. And he's also now uh, an exhibition of the jewelry and some silver tableware and silverware that his mother and uh, Long's mother and grandmother. So I think stories and 
quick one, guys, for the thing of time. Um, I think a lot of the questions which were asked have already been covered in the answers. So now I'm going to switch it on to uh, Viber, who's going to be summarizing and giving a thank you message to everybody. I'm going to try and find Viber. Yeah, I am there. There you are. I'm there. Can you hear me? Yeah, lift your hand. I'm there. I'm there. This Can you hear me? Uh, I can't. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so thank you, Sajit. I'll, I'll, I'll pile on now. So, uh, I think it, it was such an amazing, you know, Aditi, Nina. Thank you so much. Like for me, uh, it's like oh, Aag or Pani ka show. Ek sa, um, look, dekh rahe hain aaj. It's like <laughs> the <laughs> both this hearing and you know go, going through your your journeys and I think that excitement like uh, I'm seeing both of you are still students you know that's the that's such an inspiring you know thing for us and you know I think we all uh, feel extremely proud to be be your students um, uh, because I think uh, you you're all mahagurus but I think. Uh, feel more like you know super duper seniors who are still so passionate about your projects uh, doing doing your work with so much equal length and pouring that arc and pani into your work in your own unique ways so so big big thank you from the entire you know main gate uh, community uh, and i'll not take up much footage because so many people it's a full house today and even now so many uh, students i think they all will probably say thank you. Sajid, I mean, you know, do we do that? There's a quick yes. one uh, behind the scenes that uh, Anuj has been also instrumental for setting this whole thing up and uh, along with uh, you know, Nisha and Diana to sort of put this together. So what we're doing is each session has somebody, uh, there's somebody who's a host who does a lot of homework. Um, we have, again, practice sessions with the people who are speaking. Uh, digging up photos. Um, there's a lot behind the scenes. So thanks a lot to Diana and Nisha for doing this and uh, Anuj also for starting this whole thing off. So we have quite a few people lined up. Uh, we have Daya is going to be sharing soon. Uh, Gulu, Diana is going to be sharing her work. Uh, we have Errol coming up. Uh, we're trying to coordinate with uh, Manu Gajar. Uh, then we have uh, Vandana Kataria. There's Anirban. So there's quite a full lineup, uh, which is all the wow. way. Yeah. All the way to September twice a week, uh, so that and I need wow. to be constantly posting on that uh, to keep everybody uh, connected. So the idea was started off with just uh, during this lockdown that how do we just reconnect and make it like a reunion? And you see a lot of these faces after a long time. So I guess the blessing of the lockdown is to be able to reconnect. It was wonderful seeing mm -hmm. people come out uh, not for a long time, seeing everybody. So. Fantastic and uh, see you all soon for the next session.